Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, and we're going to unveil some wicked secrets for you as far as the gripping of the tennis racket versus the hammer versus the golf club. And we're going to put away a bunch of myths right here, right now. Stay tuned. Okay. So I took a few screenshots here of tennis grips for topspin backhand tutorials. And you'll notice here Clay Ballard is uh, demonstrating what impact position would look like. Now let's look at Roger Federer here in a backhand. In his preparation, he goes down to the ground to get his kinetic chain engaged. And then watch coming into impact here. See the position of his arm versus racket. Notice moment of impact here and he's moving up through the stroke. Look at the angle of his arm versus the angle of the tennis racket. If you're using a tennis racket the same way, if you're gripping that tennis racket the same way you would in a golf club with a neutral grip square face, then how in the world are you going to create that topspin? Well, you'll notice that they don't go the bowing of the wrist way. See, if I could bow my wrist right now or bow my wrist, I could move the tennis racket down, but notice the angle at my wrist would be very much compromised in. So what they do is they turn the racket in a way that at the moment of impact, when they're moving up through, see the position of my arm versus the racket? Well, that's very much like if you were going to take a hammer and I want to hammer down on something and now I want to hammer through. So imagine a door frame standing right here and I'm about to hammer through the door frame. See the position of my arm versus the head of the hammer. Wouldn't that be exactly like that topspin backhand? So if we look at Obviously in baseball, it doesn't really matter, but you won't see any baseball players coming in with a very bowed wrist like this. This is, you know, a very compromised position. So this is how they're coming in. And because the bat is round, no big deal. And that's why you see such a strong position of that lead arm when they're coming in for a topspin backhand. So let's look at how that would look like in golf. So if I take my neutral grip and I move my hand forward, notice in tennis, of course, like any other sport, the hand comes through first, then the, rack, the handle of the racket, then the frame of the racket, and finally the tip of the racket. So this is how a kinetic chain is engaged. So if I'm slashing a sword. So there's the blade of my sword shaving down. And now I want to shave in that direction. Notice how my arm would lead. Elbow leads hand, hand leads blade, blade leads tip of blade. And then I've got my release. So if I had a bamboo shoot growing overhead, there's my blade. I'm coming through and after I perform that cut, there's that nice pronation that you normally see in tennis. So this is a powerful position to do my blade through that bamboo shoot because I'm going that way. Look at the difference. So this would be a flipping position. So that would, that would not be as powerful a cut so if I had something very, very um, thick to cut through, this would be a much more powerful position. So if you start off with your normal, you know, neutral grip, square face, and then the hands come through first, well, sorry, we're going to have to do something to square this up. How do you square that up? Well, you hear a lot of you know, folks on YouTube, uh, you know, teachers talking about bowing the wrist. So if I bow the wrist, yeah, I can get some of that job done. Most of the time I don't get enough. So now I got to start using my body. Well, there you go. So now as I try to square my body, now this whole, the whole center of my swing has been compromised. Much easier to just close the face. There's a reason why our grip is round. So I close the face. 
For many of you, you're going you're gonna to think, oh my gosh, this looks way too closed. That doesn't seem right. That's a static position that you'd be looking at. Now when the hands come through first, see the position of my lead arm now? Very much like that power position in tennis. This is a much more powerful position. It's going to generate much more compression through the golf ball. Same thing with this arm. This is a weakened arm, and this is an arm that's staying very straight linearly. So, not as closed as you think. So I gather my backswing, fold hinge, now I'm coming through. So my brain goes to the ground, uses the ground to get my body out of the way, and notice now coming into the shot, my club face is now dynamically square, without having to compromise for too much bow in my wrist. So really, really key important stuff to understand. So I hope you enjoyed that little excerpt of tennis, baseball, hammering, and golf. We'll see you in the next one.